The other day I was at the park with a friend who had a water bottle. When the wind blew across the water bottle, it made this great musical sound. I thought that was pretty cool, and I wanted to share with you a little bit about why that happens and have an experiment for you to do. Remember when we talked about how sound is just vibration? When something moves back and forth, that's a vibration. If it moves back and forth really slow, that makes a low sound. If it moves back and forth more quickly, that makes a high sound. Musical instruments work by making different speeds of vibrations that make different notes. On a piano, pressing the keys vibrates strings of different lengths and thicknesses that vibrate at different speeds so each string is a different note. A trumpet has valves that make the air go through tubes of different lengths. When it goes through shorter tubes, you get higher sounds. When it goes through longer tubes, you get lower sounds. The musician can also vibrate the air faster or slower with their lips to make the sounds even higher or even lower. With a trombone, pulling the slide out makes the tube the air goes through longer, so the farther out the slide, the lower the sound. So in general, larger things will vibrate more slowly and make lower sounds, and smaller things will vibrate more quickly and make higher sounds. Let's test that hypothesis with some water bottles. I have two water bottles here that are the same, except one has a lot of water and one has a little bit of water. Now, we want to look at the space that is going to be vibrating. I'm going to blow air in these, and the air will vibrate in this space. This one has a small space, and this one has a large space. So we would expect this one to have a higher sound, and this one to have a lower sound. Let's see if we're right. Here's the smaller one. And here's the bigger one. <sighs> oh, our hypothesis was right. The one with more space vibrated more slowly and made a lower sound. Let's see if the same thing holds true for these two glasses. This one has a little bit of water in it, and this one has a lot of water in it. So here's the one with a lot of water, and the one with a little water. Hey, wait a minute. This one is lower than this one. How can that be? We need to remember that whatever is vibrating makes the sound. So with this one, the glass can vibrate more because there's less water in it. In this one, it's harder for the glass to vibrate, and so it vibrates at a lower frequency. We get a lower sound. Today for STEM, I want you to try this experiment for yourself. Ask an adult if you can use some bottles, cans, glasses, cups, jars, or anything that you could put water in. Fill them with different amounts of water and then tap them gently with the spoon to see what different kinds of sounds they make. If you have two that are the same, you can fill them with different amounts of water and see just what the effect of the water is. Notice whether the sound is higher or lower with more or less water. If you want to try making sound with air too, you're going to need some kind of container that has a small opening at the top, like a bottle or made of glass or plastic, or even a can will work, uh, not as well. Okay, now we don't blow straight into it, that doesn't work, and we don't blow into it like this, that doesn't work either. We need to blow air diagonally down and with a certain strength and control. So you kind of take your bottom lip and tuck it in like this, and put the bottle right up next to your lip and have the bottle straight up and down. Use your upper lip to create a tight, controlled stream of air. You don't have to blow hard. That's too hard. And we don't want to be all wimpy either. That's not going to work. We need a controlled like, like that. This is tricky. Don't worry if you don't get it right away. Keep trying different angles and strengths of air until you can get a nice sound. Then you can add more or less water and see what happens to your sound. You can also take a water bottle outside on a windy afternoon and hold it up in the air and see if you can get that same sound that my friend did at the park. When you're done, take a picture or video of your instruments and share it with your class. If you wanted to share a song with us, that would be awesome. Or at least just show us the sounds that your instruments can make. I hope you stay safe, have fun, and keep making beautiful sounds.